morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Myself, Siyadar Shah Maheshwari, a proud Fintrama and your faculty for Management Accounting. Welcome, welcome to the very first session of Management Accounting. In this session, we will be understanding that what is Management Accounting. We will be understanding various terms, terminology, concepts related to Management Accounting. And trust me guys, Management Accounting is a very, very easy subject. You just need to understand the concept and you have to remember the formula and then you will pass by fine colors my friends so without wasting any minute let's just begin the session and let's just see what is management accounting now first thing which you need to understand at this point of time management accounting when we say management accounting that means we are talking about something which is related to management firstly which is related to management and secondly in management accounting we are basically trying to do three things we are basically trying to calculate the cost related to you know production or prediction of goods and services second thing which we try to do that we try to control the cost so before try to control cost the steps which is going to come is analysis so we are going to measure the cost we are going to do the analysis of cost and then if we feel that whatever cost we have incurred it's not you know it's high and we have to reduce it then we will be going to do what we will be doing to do cost control this is the crux of management accounting and in all the chapters which we were going to you know study later in different different session i will be teaching that how you can control the cost how you can measure the cost or what is the analysis which we are going to derive from this particular formula so the three things which we will be doing in this entire subject that is measurement some chapters are related to measurement of cost some chapters are related to you know analysis regarding the cost and some chapters are related to cost control so this is what we are going to study in this chapter of or in this entire subject of management accounting now how this subject of management accounting differ from your financial accounting or financial management so guys what is financial accounting if i am not wrong you guys have already studied financial accounting somewhere in your 11th 12th or you know in your some other courses or in your graduation so financial accounting is nothing it's basically in a very simple words if i would say it's basically your accounts and what do you do in accounts what do you do in accounts there is some transaction on the basis of that transaction you record that transaction you record that transaction by you know journal ledger by journal ledger posting and then you know you prepare a trial balance and then you prepare a pnl and then you finally prepare a balance sheet so this is what happens in financial account that they on the basis of whatever your past data or the transaction you pass a journal entry then you go you know you post it in ledger account then you make a trial balance and pnl and balance sheet and what financial accounting give us financial accounting give us that what is our financial position what is like what is my profits and what is the value of my assets and liabilities so that is being you know we can able to judge regarding our financial position through our financial accounting but when i uh, talk about management accounting so as i have already told you that management accounting has something or or you know everything related to cost so over here you will be trying to calculate the cost calculate the cost then you will be analyzing that whatever cost i have incurred whatever cost i have incurred whether it's you know appropriate or inappropriate if it is inappropriate cost is inappropriate only in the case when you have incurred a higher cost so if it is inappropriate then you will be doing what you will be trying to find different different alternatives by which you can control the cost or you can reduce the cost so this is basically i would say the basic crux or basic functioning of management accounting and cost control and one more thing when i talk about financial accounting the data of financial accounting is being used by organization itself shareholders the government the banks so there are external users of you know data of financial accounting so pnl and balance sheet it will be you know obviously the shareholders are also interested the government is also interested because for the tax purpose the banks will be interested for the loan purpose so obviously there are external users but when i talk about management accounting 
only management of that particular organization will be interested because it's it is regarding cost so on um, the management of organization will be interested that how much cost whether we what how much cost we have incurred how much cost we have to be like well, how much cost we can reduce and that entire thing regarding cost who will be you know uh, who will be in, who will be interested in that particular data the management of the organization that's why it is being named as management accounting also in cost accounting but management accounting because the peep the you know the management of the organization is the one who is interested in the data which they are derived from management accounting also as i have already told you there are these three things the calculation the analysis and cost control so now let's come to our content back again and let's see what our content say so our content say cost accounting involves applying a set of principle and method techniques to determine determine means calculation of cost analyze the cost that whatever amount we have incurred whether is appropriate or inappropriate if it is appropriate it's fine no problem but if the amount or the cost which you have incurred is inappropriate then you need to find alternative ways to reduce that particular cost within the separate unit of a business let's take a very simple example so if i want to you know produce a t-shirt okay let's say this particular t-shirt which i am which i want to produce so for producing this particular t-shirt what will what is what is the cost which i have incurred so there would be material let's say of 10 dollar then there would be you know a labor because there might be some person who is engaged in cutting stitching and finishing so again and then might there might be some person who have sold this t-shirt and there might be some person who is in administrative department who is going to do all the calculation and all those things so there is labor cost again of let's say 10000 per unit then there is you know overheads overheads is basically your indirect cost when i say indirect cost that means the cost which is not directly attributable towards the product so material when i say material only the material which is directly attributed this is direct material this is direct labor so direct material means the fabric which is being used in this particular t-shirt will be considered as your direct material so let's consider it's 10 dollar direct labor 10 dollar and overheads the indirect cost that is again 10 dollar so the total came out to be 30 dollar we will be talking about all this direct material direct labor overhead in detail in this particular session and in the later sessions but as of now let's understand that what is the cost what are the you know different different uh, components of cost so different different components of cost is material the labor the indirect expenses and that come out to be 30 dollar so this 30 dollar is what this is the value of the resources value of resources which you have put to produce what to produce this particular t-shirt what are those resources the material which you have put the labor course which you have put the other expenses which you have you know put together the electricity expenses so these are all the resources which you have put together to produce this particular t-shirt and you are doing what you are just calculating the, the you know you are just calculating the value of all of those resources which you have put together to produce this particular t-shirt and the value came out took out to be how much the value came out to be 30 dollar so this 30 dollar is what is the cost of that this particular t-shirt so let's come back to our content again okay so over here one more thing this involves establishment of budget standard cost and the actual cost of operation process activity product and the analysis of variance and profitability and or the social use of funds now uh, if you remember i have just now told you that management accounting has three you know different different uh, components first is the calculation of cost then analysis and then your this thing cost control so as i have already told you that first what you are going to do you will be calculating how much cost we have incurred then you are going to analyze so for that analysis you need a comparison so for that comparison you have initially at the beginning of the year you will be setting the standards that i am going to incur for material the cost i am going to incur is let's say 10 dollar and then after you know after the year you are going to review it that you have set a standard that i am going the cost i will be incurring for one unit for material regarding material that will be 10 dollar but the actual expenditure came out to be 11 dollar so now you can clearly understand that you know as per our standard i have to incur 10 dollar but my actual expenditure turned out to be 11 dollar that means i have you know 
I have a little bit high regarding the material cost and I have to control my uh, you have to I have to control my uh, cost of material so this is what this is basically you know setting by setting standards and budget and then you know comparing it you are able to analyze that where what the work which you have done or the cost which you have incurred is appropriate or inappropriate also what is cost the outflow of an item of value against which some benefit is received is called cost this is this is what value of all the resources which you have put together will be known as what cost so for producing one t-shirt what are the resources which you have put together the material the labor the electricity the water all those all and you know the administrative department the supervision department so the cost of all of these all of these in per unit way if i will be saying it's coming 30 dollars so that 30 dollar is what that is my cost so the example of cost can be staff salary so it will be a component of cost that's your baker salary the salesperson salary cost of in this particular case i am taking an example of bakery so cost of baking material the flour the sugar the chocolate that is again you know component of your cost then the fuel cost which you have incurred the transportation cost which you have incurred the advertisement cost which you have incurred anything which you have incurred which is giving some benefit to your product will be considered as what as will be considered as the part of your cost then cost type differ from business to business the larger the business the more the cost type the business might have so it will obviously going to differ from every business to business and we will be studying about this in detail later in this particular session or in another session now why organization need cost accounting system what is the purpose that we are studying you know this particular subject of management accounting see as i have already told you that in this particular subject of management accounting there are three things which we are going to understand the cost calculation the analysis of cost and the cost control so if suppose the organization do not know that there is a concept of management accounting and they do not calculate their actual cost incurred if they are not going to calculate their actual cost incurred what's going to happen they do not have any analysis and since they do not have any analysis what's going to happen they do, will never be able to understand that the way of working the way of working which they are following is good or bad for that particular organization because they will never be able to analyze that the cost which they have incurred is appropriate or inappropriate as per them the whatever they are doing is good but that is actually not good see what i'm trying to say over here let's suppose if let's suppose the actual cost incurred for you know the actual cost incurred for one t-shirt is 30 dollars okay and as per your standards you have to produce this particular t-shirt in 25 dollars okay so suppose you have not set it you know this you have not set this particular standard and you have ne you have not you know calculated your total cost so what's going to happen or let's suppose you have calculated your total cost but you have not uh, you know settled a standard at the beginning of year so what's going to happen you will never know that you have incurred more cost because this is your actual expenditure actual expenditure and this is your budgeted so as per your budgets you have or as per your estimates this is your estimated expenditure so as per your estimate you have to incur 25 dollar to produce one particular t-shirt but your expen actual expenditure turn out 30 dollar for producing one t-shirt that means you have incurred more cost now what is your next step yeah, you are understood you have analyzed from this from here that you have incurred more cost now what will be your next step next step your next step will be 100 percent to control the cost but if you have not you know calculated if you have never ever calculated this estimated cost and so you will never be able to know that i have incurred the more cost and if you are not able to understand or know that i have incurred more cost then you will never be able to you know you will never put efforts to reduce that particular cost and in that way what's going to happen you will always going to incur 30 dollar and never make attempt to you know reduce the cost and because in a management accounting there's a concept profit can be increased by two way by reducing the cost or by increasing the sales volume so if you can reduce your cost you can directly you know increase your profits so if over here you since you have you know uh, understood that yes we have to reduce our cost by five dollars that's what is going to happen if you can reduce your cost by five dollars what's going to happen that your profit is going to increase increase by five dollars increase by five dollars simply so if 
you are not going to understand the concepts of management accounting you will never able to calculate the cost you will never able to analyze the cost you will never and if you are not able to analyze calculate the actual cost and uh, analyze the cost you will never able to make efforts to reduce the cost or you know over expenditures so a uh, organization cost system is a foundation of the internal financial information system for manager it provide information that management need to plan and control the organization activity and to make decision about the future see whenever whenever in the organization there's a i would say there's a planning or procedures happens or whenever you know organization want to expand or diversify itself the first thing which they do is to they calculate what will be the expenditure or what will be the cost they have to incur to you know for the purpose of expansion or to bring new product line or you know for any activity so if you are not able to calculate your cost you can never able to you know invest or anywhere in the organization you are getting my point because see what's going to happen let me make you understand let's suppose there is a big project coming and you know you want to invest in that particular opportunity you want to invest and if you want to invest obviously why you are going to invest because you want profits at the end okay so whenever the organization whatever organization you have what they do they basically calculate let's say you know they they are investing 1 lakh dollars okay they are investing 1 lakh dollars and what they are going to do they will be you know this is their cost okay now they will be calculating that what will be the profit we will be deriving by investing in this particular business also to arrive at this figure of 1 lakh to arrive at this figure of 1 lakh they have to do estimation estimation regarding what estimation regarding what what how much amount of material you know material cost we have to incur how much amount of labor cost we have to incur how much amount of overhead cost we have to incur so all those estimation they have to do to reach this 1 lakh dollar okay and afterwards they have to also you know make the uh, you know calculate the cash inflow that how much profits we will be you know deriving from this particular business or this particular project and then only after doing this entire study of uh, whatever what, how much we have, we will be investing and how much we will be getting in return they are going to invest in any business all the people or all the you know these business or the companies or the organization they do not invest in a blink of a moment they invest after you know doing entire research analysis and our understanding that what will be my profit percentage what will be my risk what will be my returns after understanding all of them are uh, all of these perspective then only they are going to invest but for understanding all of these prospect you have to first ascertain that what will be my total cost to carry on this particular project and for uh, you know calculating the total cost to carry on that particular project you have to calculate cost and to calculating that cost you have to understand the subject of management accounting this particular subject of management accounting is really really helpful in all the big organization for the purpose of decision making for the purpose of cost control role for the purpose of calculation of cost okay uh, let's come over here so actual cost uh, of unit for the latest period so you can calculate the cost actual cost incurred for producing one unit actual cost of operating a department for the latest period you can also calculate what will be your actual cost to you know run one particular department and you can also forecast the cost which you are going to incur for you know for you know carrying on particular operation of a producing different level of activity that is also can you can easily you know evaluate by using the concepts of management accounting okay the next thing which we are going to study over here is cost unit what we are going to study the next thing which we are going to study is cost unit what is cost unit so the as as the definition says a unit of product or service with which cost is attached so what they want to make you understand at this point of time is basically see you have to express cost in some terms okay you cannot say that you know 
like suppose you if you want to buy a petrol so how you express the petrol that's 10 dollar per liter so that's per liter is what that is basically the cost unit basically you are expressing your cost in some terms if i would say petrol if i am going to say petrol 20 liter no uh, sorry 20 dollars what it, it does not make any sense 20 dollars what 20 dollar for 1 liter 2 liters or 5 liter i am not able to you know i am not getting it that in how, in that particular amount how much you know units i am able to derive so you have to express for one particular one unit or you know 1 kg or 1 liter you have to express it so if i want to buy a Banana, it will be per dozen. Okay, if I want to buy a chair, it will be per chair. The cost is two hundred dollars or hundred dollars. If I want to buy one mobile, so it will be cost per mobile. That means let's say three hundred dollars per mobile. So you are understanding that cost unit is basically a unit in which you express the cost. A unit in which you express the cost. That's known as cost unit. And it will be obviously different for each of your goods and services. So if you will be, if you want to buy coffee from Starbucks, then it will be obviously the cost unit will be, you know, $10 for one coffee. It, it will be like that only $10 per coffee. Or if I want to buy Subway from, you know, Subway, then, you know, it will be again the same way the cost will be specified in that particular way. So a table or a chair for furniture manufacture, a room in a hotel, that's again your uh, cost unit then unit cost all expenses are carried out to make one unit of product is called as cost of that unit or unit cost or cost per unit unit cost is nothing it's basically to manufacture one product or services to manufacture one goods and services how much cost you have incurred per unit to manufacture one unit of goods and services how much cost you have incurred so if i want to say that if i'm saying that <clears throat> For manufacturing one table, for manufacturing one table, the cost, the total cost, the total cost per unit which I am incurring is how much? Let's say fifty dollars. That is basically for producing one table, I am incurring how much cost? Fifty dollars. Same goes for chair. That for produce, let's say uh, for producing one chair, the cost which I am going to incur is thirty dollars. So this thirty dollar is basically what is a unit cost? Unit cost means to, for producing one unit of product, how much cost you are incurring? So for producing one unit of ch one chair, the cost which I am going to incur is thirty. So it's very simple and easy. Unit cost that means cost or the expenses which you are going to you know incur to produce one unit of product. Simple and the cost unit is basically you are able to so don't get confused between these two concepts cost unit and unit cost student you know a lot of times students get confused between cost unit and unit cost and then they are like ma'am we have done wrong in the exam no you don't have to get confused it's very very simple cost when i say cost unit means that the way or the units or the you know in which you are expressing your cost and when i say unit cost that means the cost which you are going to incur to produce one goods one particular good or one particular service then there is cost cent cost center okay cost center is a very interesting concept cost center says that it's basically a center or a department it can be a department a activity, a branch, a product or service for which you are calculating the cost. Anything, basically you can understand like thing, anything for which you are calculating cost becomes cost center. It can be a department in your organization, there is an administrative department and if you want to you know, calculate total cost to run that particular department, so that department will become cost center. Again, the same thing goes for a product. Let's say you are a shampoo manufacturer. So for producing shampoo, uh, you know, you have a uh, different, different brands of, you know, different, different categories of shampoo, shampoo for curly hair, shampoo, dandruff shampoo and shampoo for, you know, voluminizing shampoo. So let's suppose you want to, you know, calculate total cost to produce, to, you know, to produce voluminizing shampoo. So that product, the voluminizing shampoo that will become your cost center. This, so basically what I'm trying to say, Anything for which you are trying to calculate total cost will become your cost center. It can be a department, it can be any activity, it can be any function, it can be any equipment, anything. So, a cost center is a production or a service location, function, activity, item for which costs are accumulated and analyzed. <laughs> So cost center is used as collecting place for cost. Basically, that's the same thing that for which you are trying to calculate the cost the cost of operation the cost center is determined for the period and then this total cost is related to the cost unit with which 
with which have passed through the cost centers. Now, for examples over here, if I say about service location, so, so in organization, what are the department which provide services? The store department, the canteen department, the, these are the department which provide services. So obviously they will become your cost center. Function, if I would say the sales, the production, these are the function in the organization. So if you want to you know, calculate total cost for carrying on production function, you can calculate. Then the activity quality control, you know, in organization, sometimes what happens to, you know, evaluate your quality, you do quality inspection. And for that, obviously, you are going to incur some cost. So if you want to, you know, calculate, if you are calculating uh, total cost for the quality control activity, again, the quality control activity will become your cost center. And packaging machine, if you want to calculate total cost that how much, you know, uh, if, uh, if I have to operate the, op, you know, packaging machine, what will be my total cost, then that item of equipment will become your cost center. So the basic concept right, remains the same. Anything for which you are trying to calculate total cost to operate it or to run it and uh, you are analyzing it, that particular department, activity, function, equipment will become your cost center. Then the next concept which we have is cost object. The concept of cost object and cost center are, you know, I would say they are one and the same thing to an extent because in cost object also, if you will be read, a cost object is any activity or item for which separate measurement of cost is desired. So again, over here also, you are doing cost calculation only. Okay, but it is, uh, I would say it is uh, confined to product and services. When we, I talk about cost center, over there, you know, you can calculate cost for activity, department, function, product, services, everything. In case of cost object, you are trying to calculate total cost only for a product or services. So it is a little bit confined uh, regarding a activity or a product or a service. It, it will not include department function. It is not going to include department function. So cost object is again something for which is cost is being calculated. Any product for which cost is being calculated. So let's suppose the second let's continue the same example that you are a shampoo manufacturer and you are producing a uh, voluminizing shampoo uh, you know voluminizing shampoo shampoo for curly ears and dandruff you know for dandruff uh, you are producing shampoo and dandruff shampoos so if you want to calculate cost of all of these three products that then these three products will become your cost object so it can be cost unit or cost center uh, for example cost of a, that's why they are saying that it can be a cost center for example, cost of a product, cost of rendering service to bank or to hospital patient, cost of operating particular department or sales territory, indeed anything for which one wants to measure the cost of resources used. So again, I'm saying it's something which is similar to cost center only. Now, the next thing which we have to understand is need to classify cost. Now, you know, later in this particular session itself, we will be understanding classification of class. Class is being classified on different, different basis, on the basis of their nature, on the basis of behavior, on the basis of, you know, on the basis of their functions, so cost is being classified. Why there's a need for classifying the cost? So that there's a bifurcation of it. And every cost, you know, there's a different type of behavior associated with each and every cost. So if we understand that behavior, we will be able to, you know, analyze it in a better way and then we can make the seasons in a better way. So that's why it's better to understand, to classify the cost and to understand the cost in the terms, whatever properties they have attached to it. So over here we have complete set of information of cost to make one unit of pro uh, product is relevant for management use, but the individual management will need, not need complete set of information. So. A production manager will need information which relates to make unit of product. Store manager will need information about the cost of raw material and the quantity of product. Also, bifurcation of cost helps, you know, uh, obviously since there's a bifurcation of uh, cost is going to happen because of classification. So obviously the production manager, production manager is someone who is engaged in the production of goods and services. So he is only, you know, concerned about the cost which is related to production department. So if you're going to do the bifurcation, he can easily identify that these are the costs which is related to production and then he can analyze it in a better way and he can control or reduce it in a better way. Because if there's a bifurcation, he 
know that this is the cost related to my department and I have to you know look over this this particular cost but if there's no bifurcation you only tell all the department managers whether the production sales administrative that the to total cost is $30 now they do not know that what is the cost related to their department and since they do not know what is the cost related to their department they cannot do any further analysis but if they know that okay I am $30 the cost related to production is you know let's say $20 and then they can they can you know make further analysis regarding it and if there is you know any chance to reduce the cost by any alternative way they can you know opt for that also sales goes for the stores manager store manager is someone who is looking after the store department the warehouse department so he is concerned with the cost related to the warehousing and you know holding the uh, holding the inventories so obviously in, in the total cost the total cost is $30 now he is not concerned about the, those $30 he is concerned only about the cost related to the store department and if he can get that he is going to make the better decision and better analysis and can control cost in a better way so that's a, also a reason that if you can bifurcate the cost and you know can provide each department that this is the cost related to your department so they can make a better you know they can estimate the cost for the next few next period also and then they can compare it and then they can you know analyze it in a better manner so over here that's why we classify cost uh, cost in a different logical groups uh, for management use and that's why we classify it Sometimes management has to report internal and sometimes to external bodies. Now, also, why cost classification? The aim of class classification is to find the cost incurred in the production of cost unit and the important for a number of reasons. Also, I would say these are the reasons by which it is why it is important for cost classification or calculation of cost. First reason which they, which we have over here setting the selling price see it's very very evident that if you do not know what is your total cost in what like if you do not know that my total cost is $30 then you can never estimate or you can never determine your selling price because if you know that okay my total cost is $30 in that only you are going to add your profit percentage let's say you have added a profit of $10 per unit then only you can be you will be able to derive your selling price but if you do not know this $30 that my total cost incur for producing one unit is $30 you can never ever reach at this particular point you can make any uh, you know those uh, estimation you can make but the correct selling price you can never ever be able to determine so to uh, determine the correct selling price at which you have a profits then uh, at which you have profits you need cost let's suppose you do not know your cost okay the cost which you are incurring is $30 but you do not know and you are selling your goods at $25 you are clearly you are clearly doing what you are clearly uh, doing you making company in losses so to to arrive at profit you need first cost and in that cost obviously you are going to add profit and then only you will be able to derive your selling price so the cost that can be covered and profit can be made then again the decision making purpose that I have explained you earlier also in this particular session that if you want to do any decision if you want like if you are if organization or company is going for expansion amalgamation merger uh, they are starting any product line anything they are doing they need to first understand that what will be the cost which we are going to incur because if they know that okay this is the amount of cost which we are going to incur to carry on this particular project then they will be able to determine that okay and obviously they will be able to determine they will be evaluating what is the cash inflows or the revenue which we can generate and then only they can be they will be able to you know make comparison between the revenue and cost and if revenue is greater than cost then only they are going to invest in that particular business otherwise they will not be investing in that particular business but if they do not know that this is the cost then how they are from what they are going to compare revenue they cannot compare obviously they they will not be able to compare it and if they are not going to compare revenue from cost they will be going to make a wrong decision so for decision making pro perspective also it's very very important that you have to know two things revenue and cost both of those these things are very very important if you know revenue and you do not know cost then also you cannot do decision making in a proper way and if you know cost and you do not know revenue then also you cannot do decision making in a proper way to do a decision making in a proper way for a future projects you need to know what will be my future revenue from that project and what will be my future cost in that how much cost I'm going to incur and then you are going to compare both of them and if revenue is greater than cost obviously you should invest in that particular project but if at that
that particular point of time you feel that i cannot generate enough revenue to cover up my cost you will not be investing in that particular business and we will be discussing this particular concept in detail when we will be doing the you know topic of capital budgeting uh, over there we will be having all these decision making perspective and also when you will be studying you know your uh, f5 over there there are lots of concepts related to decision making that's why i'm saying this particular subject of management accounting is not only useful at this particular point of time for passing f2 the concept which you are going to study in management accounting at f2 level they will become base for your f5 f9 for apm afm so you are understanding how important this subject this subject is the subject will be based for four more subject and trust me if your concepts are clear at base level it will be really really easy for clear all those subjects okay then the next thing which we have is planning future activity again the same thing if you you know for any planning perspective whether it's expansion whatever it is you need to first determine the cost a company has a limited resources uh, resources planning is done only after determining the cost control of resources and cost of production so again if you want to you know uh, if you want to control your resources or when i say control of resources basically if you want to reduce your cost and you, you reduce your cost and cost of production then you have to first determine your cost actual cost and then what you're going to do you are going to compare your actual cost with the estimates of the budget which you have made at the beginning of the year if your actual cost is less than the cost which you have estimated at the beginning of the year very good very good but if your actual cost is higher than your estimates which you have made at the beginning of the year then there's a problem and then you have to make further investigation and then you have to make efforts to reduce your actual cost to uh, to reduce your actual cost then reporting the results of the business obviously if you have to report the result of business you need cost what do you you know in your pnl on the your credit side there's a sales okay uh, sales comes and on the debit side all your expenses comes if you do not know what are your expenditures you will never be able to calculate your profits so to arrive at profit obviously you need cost because in even in the financial accounting i would say even in financial accounting you need help of management accounting because management accounting is a subject which is going to give all the cost and from your sales or from your revenue you will be subtracting all these costs and then only you will be deriving your profits so again for reporting the results of business you need cost so it depend on the knowledge in the cost incur the value of stock and budgeting budgeting is the concept basically for the upcoming period whatever you, let's say uh, for the next financial year if i want to calculate my revenue or what will be my revenue what will be my what will be my profits so for that i will be you know making all the estimates estimates regarding what will be my active or how much units i am going to produce for producing those units what is the cost i am going to incur and at how much you know selling price i can sell them and then eventually i can find out the revenue from that revenue i can subtract the cost and then i can ca calculate my estimated profits so again for the purpose of budgeting you need what you need your cost so this concept again this concept of budgeting we will be we will be having a entire session regarding the budgeting and we will be discussing this over there also but as of now you need to understand what is budgeting in budgeting what we do we make you know we basically uh, estimates we make estimates for the future periods estimates for future period regarding the cost regarding the uh, revenue regarding the volume of the uh, units which we are going to produce so we make estimates regarding all of this and then we will be going to make estimate regarding and after you know estimating all of that items we will be estimating that okay at the next financial year we can make a profit of this much amount so this is how on uh, this is the these are the reasons why we are you know understanding why we are learning the subject of management accounting and that's why i'm saying the subject of management accounting is really really interesting in this particular session we are understanding the basic terms and concepts so it's a little bit theoretical but in the later chapter from the very next session but real and then labor all of it whatever we are going to study is practical and we will be doing lots of lots of question during the session itself and you know when we will be doing video question marathon because video in video question marathon we have curated n number of question there are n number of question that we are going to solve so you don't need to worry about that okay so 
with this we have understood that why we are studying the subject of management accounting because the first reason to understand to calculate our selling price the second reason or third reason to plan our future activity to make proper decisions fourth reason to control the cost obviously by controlling the cost what we can do we can increase our profit then for reporting the results of the business because to arrive at the profits in pnl we need to, all the expenditures which we have incurred and to arrive to calculate you know to uh, to arrive at profit we need to calculate all the expenditure which we have incurred and we have to calculate the value of those expenditures and then for budgeting purpose now then the next concept which we have over here is cost classification so cost is being classified in different different categories and then you can you know you can use it depending upon your analysis purpose that for what category you want to use it so cost is being classified by nature by function product period and uh, product and you know period controllable by behavior cost and uncontrollable cost so the first the first category which we have over here is by nature so whatever your total cost you can classify it into three category material labor and the expenses okay material labor and expenses so when you are saying that i am incurring 30 dollars for producing one t-shirt we are incurring 30 dollars to producing you know one t-shirt so how much amount you are incurring for material how much amount you are incurring for labor and how much amount you are incurring for other expenses when i say material all the material all the cost related to material whether the cost cost of this fabric whether the cost of you know the cleaning material which is being used in the organization whether the cost related to related to any kind of material material which organization is requiring to produce this particular t-shirt so it can be cost related to the fabric the buttons the thread the lubricant oil which will be required for you know lubricating the uh, lubricating the sewing machine or the cleaning material which is being required for cleaning the premises any kind of material that will be categorized under the category of material when i say labor labor cost will include all the labor cost labor which is associated in the production activity labor which are not associated in the you know production activity someone who is associated with production activity that means like the person the worker who is engaged in the cutting stitching and finishing work of t-shirt that will that is a person who is engaged in production activity because he is making that product someone who is making the product is the person who is engaged that worker is engaged in the production act activity let me write over here so that you have a better understandability when i say material material labor and overhead so uh, engaged in production and non production so when i say engage in production means someone who is manufacturing who is engaged in the manufacturing of product and services so the person worker who is engaged in the cutting of fabric stitching of fabric finishing of fabric is someone who is engaged in production activity but someone who is engaged in the maintenance department or supervision department or the administrative department or finance department is some is basically someone who is not in a production activity so he is a non production he is engaged in a non productive activity but all of them like this is the entire workforce so the cost whatever wages or salary you are paying to the workers of production department or to the employees engaged in any other department their total you know uh, wages or salary will comprises as the labor cost of the organization and then we have the expenses so expenses means all the other expenses all the other expenses that means the electricity expenses the water expenses the maintenance expenses okay the maintenance expenses then there can be rent in the organization the repair all the other expenses rent repair maintenance depre depreciation is, can be also be included depreciation or any kind of any uh, you know any kind of expenditure which is which is which you cannot specify in the material or in the labor is going to come over here the insurance insurance okay so electricity water maintenance rent depreciation repair insurance and there are lot many uh, expenditure which advertisement expenditure you know interest cost advertisement expenditure interest cost selling and distribution expenditure all these expenditure are going to come under the category of expenses so over here we have divided the total cost in three category first the material second the labor and third the expenses now material is again of two kinds 
the way labor is of two kinds the same way uh, material is of two kind that's the direct material and the indirect material direct material is the material which is basically you know which is used in the production activity simply a material which is used in the production activity so production activity or which can be identified in a very simple way if i would say which can be identified in the final product so if i say about the fabric which is being used for manufacturing this particular t-shirt is what is your direct material because why because it can be identified in your final product but if i say about the lubricant oil for lubricating the sewing machine that is not something which can i can identify or trace in this particular t-shirt so that will become my indirect that will that lubricating oil will become what that will become my indirect material also the consumption of direct material is going to increase in the same proportion in which your production is going to increase consumption because if i want to manufacture this particular t-shirt and for producing one t-shirt i am i will require one meter of cloth one meter of cloth for 200 t-shirts i will be requiring 200 meters of clothes and for 2000 t-shirts i will be requiring 2000 you know meters of clothes so over here consumption is increasing in the same proportion in which my volume is increasing but if i talk about the lubricating oil it's not going to increase in the same proportion in which my production is going to increase because if i'm going let's say uh, at the very beginning when i'm going to start you know sewing i'm going to lubricate the machine then after you know let's say eight or after eight or ten randomly basically whenever i feel the friction in the machine i'm going to lubricate the machine so there is no i will there is no direct increase in the consumption or it's going to increase if you're going to increase the production it's going to increase but not in the same proportion in which production is going to increase so that's what you know your direct and the indirect material and we will be understanding the concept of direct and indirect material when we'll be doing you know chapter material but over here also i have given you a very really good explanation of mater direct material and indirect material the same is with the labor direct labor is people uh, are the workers who are engaged in the production activity the uh, the worker like the worker who is engaged in the cutting stitching and finishing work and the indirect labor force is someone who is not engaged in the production activity which is engaged in the administrative department which can be engaged in the you know finance department in your research and development department so they are not engaged in the production activity and since they are not engaged in the production activity they will not be categorized as indirect labor force indirect uh, indirect labor and this the someone who is engaged in the production will be categorized as direct labor so let's get back over here so over here they have given you the direct cost and the indirect cost so direct cost is basically the cost which you are going to incur for you know the same concept the direct material your direct labor and the direct expenses these are your direct cost your direct material your direct labor and your direct expenses these are what these are your direct costs the cost which your your, your direct material your direct labor and direct expenses they can identify in your final product because if i say about this particular t-shirt you can understand very easily that there's this fabric is what this fabric is your direct material because you can easily trace it the direct labor the uh, you know the work done by worker one who has the, done the cutting stitching and finishing work so you obviously can identify his uh, efforts in manufacturing of this particular t-shirt because you very well know that someone has cut it, this particular t-shirt someone has stitched it and someone has done finishing work so yes the direct labor component is also can be easily the labor force uh, efforts can be easily identified in this particular t-shirts so a cost that can be directly identified with the specific cost unit or cost center is direct cost like material used in production worker paid for making the product they are known as the direct cost and indirect which cannot be directly identified with a specific specific cost unit or cost center it is jointly incurred and must be shared on an equitable basis like rent of a building salaries of a administrative department worker basically someone who is not engaged in the production activity the salary of an administrative department worker or salary of a finance department worker so all of them is what is your indirect cost now again the, there is a category of material material is basically something which is being used for manufacturing of goods and services so there is a direct material and indirect material direct material is what which is which can be directly and easily identified in a particular goods and services and obviously it, uh, its consumption is going to increase in the same proportion in which your production is going to increase so it become major part of your finished goods also it's a major part of your finished goods so in this particular t-shirt you can very well know that this fabric is a major component and like 
clothes for a shirt paper for a book indirect material is something which you cannot identify or trace in your final product and the consumption is also not going to increase in the same proportion in which your uh, volume increases and in the total cost it's not it will not become a major part of your product so like the cleaning material the lubricating the nails the glue the button all of them are what all of them are your indirect material same goes with the labor labor is basically what labor in my organization labor is what some any payment which you are due to your labor force to your workers that is being known as your labor cost the payment made to the workers for the work they have done is called labor cost it can be again the direct and the indirect direct labor are people or the workers which are which is directly involved in making of a product so basically a laborer who is engaged in assembling of a chair or wages of a carpenter all of them are basically producing what they are producing the goods indirect labor is someone is who is not engaged not directly engaged in the production activity so like maintenance worker the storekeeper salary the factory manager salary the factory supervisor salary all of them are what all of them are your indirect labor force same goes with the expenses expenses are of two kinds the indirect expenses and indirect expenses those expenses which are specifically incurred for you know producing some goods and services like let's, let's say the special tool for a job or hire or machinery for a production activity that is direct expenses indirect expenses are which are not specifically being incurred basically your factory rent electricity bills rates all of them are your indirect expenses now there's a very simple formula direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses this is your prime cost all the direct cost direct cost are of three you know direct cost can be further classified in three categories direct material direct labor and direct expenses so all together they are known as prime cost and it's a very important formula which you have to learn the second thing a formula is production overhead the word overhead this word overhead means indirect indirect cost so what did the if i want to say production indirect cost cost production overhead is basically cost related to production department but the indirect cost so indirect material indirect labor and indirect expenses is what your production overhead then what is your production cost production cost is basically total cost which you have incurred to produce goods and services so uh it will be direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses the indirect material plus indirect labor plus indirect expenses so if i would say in two words that means prime cost plus production overhead then there is one more cost that is your indirect expenses related to non productive activity non production activity or non manufacturing activity these are the costs which you are going to incur in a selling department distribution department administrative department finance department research and development department so these are the costs related to selling cost distribution cost administrative cost finance cost and research and development cost and if i have i have to calculate the total cost that is the production cost plus the to total non production uh, overheads or non manufacturing overhead these formulas are very very important and you have to learn and you if you can you know if you can have a conceptual clarity it will be very easy for you very simple thing which you have to remember prime cost include only direct cost direct cost means direct material direct labor direct expenses if i say production overhead that means it include only indirect because it's production overhead that means indirect cost indirect cost again what indirect material indirect labor indirect overhead when i say production cost production cost and production overhead are two different kind of cost when i say production cost that means it include your prime cost also your production overhead and when i say non manufacturing overhead again the you know again the cost which is really indirect cost which is related to department non production department that means the selling distribution or you know uh finance research and administrative department because production production activity happens in which department the production department in all the other department selling department what is the work of selling department they sell the goods distribution department the distrib or the, the distribution package you know distribution work is being done by distribution department as administrative department they look after you know uh, they look after all these administration work in the organization that means your the hr work i would say or the finance department the people the people like us the cost accounting department they are they all come under the category of administrative and finance department and research and development department that means the department which is totally engaged in the research work in producing the different you know product line and to identify all those things so these are the department which is not engaged in the production activity so their cost their cost is also classified as non production overheads then there is a concept of conversion cost conversion cost is a very simple formula it's basically nothing it's basically your direct labor 
plus your production overhead as the name say conversion cost you are going to convert your raw material into what into your finished goods so convert for converting your raw material to finished goods what are the costs which you have to incur you have to incur the labor cost suppose i have bought this fabric now if i want to you know convert this fabric into t-shirt what is the cost i have to incur i have to pay to my worker to cut this particular fabric to stitch this fabric to do its finishing work i need you know a factory premises i need the you know a machine a lubricating oil a machine or uh, I am going to, you know, uh, there obviously if there's a machine, then electricity bill is going to come regarding that particular machine. So all of these expenditures are what are the expenditures? These are my production overheads and these are the direct labor. These are my expenditure, which if I'm going to incur, then the, what's going to happen? My raw material will be converted into finished goods. So only direct labor plus production overhead will be included in your conversion cost. Your non-manufacturing overhead will not be included in your conversion call because because your non-manufacturing overhead your selling cost distribution cost administrative cost finance cost research and development cost these are these costs are not incurred for converting this fabric into t-shirt only the direct labor cost and the production cost is incurred to convert your raw material into the finished goods so over here i have given the same thing the direct labor the direct expenses and the production overhead now on the basis of function you can classify cost into production and manufacturing cost selling cost distribution cost administrative cost and finance cost so let's have a look so over here now in this particular category you can classify your total cost on the basis of function now in any organization the functions are there will be one production department in which goods and services is being produced then there will be a selling department or selling cost basically selling department which is engaged in the promotion and uh, promotion of goods and services or how to sell the goods and services then there will be a distribution department which is basically engaged in distributing the goods so their cost incurred over there will be the packaging cost or you know the cost to dispatch the goods and services the courier cost all of those costs is basically cost related to distribution then administrative department the accountant salary the auditor you have engaged there then the auditor's fees then the general manager's salary someone who is engaged in the administrative work of the organization same goes with the finance cost or oh, finance cost if i say finance cost that means not something which is related to the finance department finance cost in the organization means that the interest interest which you are going to pay on the funds which you have borrowed so if you have any loans the amount of interest which you pay is become your a finance cost because to finance that particular amount what is the amount you are uh, you know you are basically incurring if you are going to borrow some funds you if you are going to borrow some funds you will obviously have to pay the interest that interest becomes your finance cost and then there's a research and development cost so research and development any act, research any activity related to research and development is categorized into research and development cost so I had, let's have a look over here so cost of material production and manufacturing cost cost of material cost of labor cost of expense and this we have already done over here also production cost production cost includes prime cost and the production overhead cost which includes the direct and indirect material direct and indirect labor and direct and indirect expenses so that's the thing over here also material cost including cost of obtaining material receiving them within the organization cost of having the material bought to the organization is known as carriage you know. cost of labor any cost which you are going to incur in the form of wages salary but that is only related to the production department and cost of any other expenses again your uh, rent rent of a factory rent uh, repair of a factory electricity bill of a factory everything and anything related to production department uh, will be considered as the cost of expenses for the production department then the selling cost include the advertisements cost the sales and promotion cost print, printing of catalogs then the salary or the commission which you pay to your salesman then the sales department you know salary staff rents insurance of a showroom if there's any bad debts then also that will be also come under the category of selling cost and if suppose what happens sometimes you you know distribute the free sample to your customer that is also it's basically for promotion perspective only that is also part of your selling cost then the distribution cost it's an indirect cost okay one more thing which you have to remember your uh, selling cost is an indirect cost 
your distribution cost is also an indirect cost because all of them are what all of them are non manufacturing overhead and overhead is what indirect cost so distribution cost is your packaging you know wages of packers drivers rents and rate insurance depreciation finished goods of a warehouse cost of delivery of finished goods then administrative cost again it's a indirect cost and it will be all the expenses related to the office general manager salary accountant salary auditor's fees telephone and postage cost of administrative department depreciation of a office building and equipment only of what of administrative department administrative department if it is related to uh, sales depreciation of a office building and equipment of sales department it's going to come under sales this thing under the selling cost if it is related to production then it's going to come under the production department then the financial cost as i have already explained it includes the interest cost or if there is any legal documentation procedure to acquire loans so the cost incurred for that and the search cost cost incurred before making a product or testing cost in the laboratories in making of a medicines that's an example over here then there are two uh, then the other category which we have over here is a product and a period cost what is product and a period cost so any cost which you have incurred to make any product and services that is known as product cost very simple any cost which you have incurred to produce any goods and services is known as product cost and what is period cost any cost which you have incurred and which you cannot change is known as your period cost which is going to remain fixed which is going to remain fixed fixed cost abhi later on in this particular session itself we will be understanding the concept of fixed cost so any cost which you have incurred and which is not going to change is your period cost and product cost is a cost which you have incurred to produce any goods and services that will again include material labor expenses and a cost that does not change which remain fixed it relate to the passage of time rather than output of individual material and cost example the salaries insurance rent of a building suppose you have taken one particular building on a lease rental now your lease agreement cannot be changed and since it cannot be changed your rent of a building is not going to uh, change then the next concept which we have over here is controllable and uncontrollable cost so controllable cost are the cost which are which are under your control which you can you know reduce which you can change by adopting alternative methods of uh, you know producing goods but uncontrollable cost are cost which you cannot change which is totally out of your control so cost which can be influenced by management decision and action controllable cost can be controlled by department manager for example material cost so like material cost you can use you know different ca uh, different category or quality of material and by that you can change your cost or the labor paid to the production so you can employ you know any other uh, worker in the organization and you can control that cost to a level but uncontrollable cost is totally something which you is not influenced by management decision and action these costs are under these costs are not under the control of department managers like you know a general manager salary or electricity bill or rate expenses so basically electricity bill you cannot control electricity bill if you are consuming electricity you know if you are consuming the unit electricity or the units then you have to pay bill accordingly and you can it's something which is beyond your control then by behavior so by behavior you have you know four categories of cost variable fixed step fixed cost and semi variable now variable cost is something which is going to remain which is going to remain constant per unit but in totality it's going to increase that means if the volume if the production volume increases your variable cost is also going to increase in totality but in per unit it's going to remain the same let me give you an example over here your direct material all these direct material direct labor and direct expenses three of them are your variable cost because if you remember over there i have told you that these cost the consumption of these but or these cost increases in the same proportion in which your production increases so these are prime cost also and these are example of variable cost also over there i have given you example that for producing one t-shirt i will be requiring 1 meter of cloth and this 1 meter of cloth let's say uh, cost 10 dollars 
So if I am producing 200 t-shirts, I will be requiring 200 meter of clothes and that will be cost me $2,000. If I will be producing 2,000 t-shirts, then I will be requiring 2,000 meter of clothes and then it will be cost me $20,000. So over here, I can clearly see that as my production, this is my production, as my production is increasing, as my production is increasing, my cost is also increasing. Okay, and it's increasing in the same proportion. So variable cost, if I say about variable cost, in totality, it's increasing. Over here, 10, over here, 200, and then 2,000, and then 20,000. So in totality, it's increasing. But if I talk about per unit, so when I'm producing one t-shirt, it's $10. When I'm producing 200 t-shirts, it's 2,000. And if I want to calculate per unit, it's again came out, come $10 per unit. And if I'm producing uh, 2,000 t-shirts, so my total cost is 20,000. 20,000 divided by units, total cost divided by units, that is again going to come $10 per unit. So in per unit wise or you know in cost per unit is, is, remain, is going to remain constant but in totality it's going to increase as your you know production is increasing so over here when you are producing one unit is ten dollar but when you are producing 200 unit is two thousand and when you are producing two thousand units it's twenty thousand so it, this is the different like this is the concept of variable cost so over here direct cost uh, okay Direct costs are mostly variable costs. This I have already told you, your direct material, your direct labor, your direct expenses, these all are your variable costs. Sales commission is also variable in relation to the volume. Uh, let's suppose you have agreed that uh, to your salesman that you will be going to give him 1% of 1% of sales commission, 1% of obviously of sales. So if sales are going to increase, your sales commission is also going to increase. If let's suppose you have a sales of hundred uh, hundred dollars and you are paying him you know one percent obviously then in that particular case you will be paying him a commission of one dollar then if it is ten you know uh, one thousand then uh, again your commission will be ten dollars then if it is ten thousand your sales is ten thousand then your commission will be hundred dollars so over here you can clearly see that your commission is also increasing and since it's increasing in the same proportion in which your sales is increasing that means that you know that means that clearly shows that sales commission is a variable cost if cost per labor hour work is constant, labor productivity is also constant. Again, the one more thing, the same thing The in this particular, you know, in the example which I have given for t-shirt, it's for uh, direct material. The same example we can employ for direct labor also. In case of direct, direct labor is also, the direct labor cost is also a variable cost, which is going to increase in the same proportion in which your production activity is going to increase. So over here, if you are going to see the graph, this is level of activity and this is your total cost. So if your level of activity is let's say 1, so the cost is $10. If it is 200, your cost is $2,000. And if it is 2000 2000 units, then the cost is $20,000. So you can clearly see that as the level of activity increases, your graph is going to raise, it's going to rise. On the another hand, if I'm taking level of activity and over here I'm taking cost per unit, this is total cost. Okay, this is total cost and this is cost per unit. So when I'm producing one unit, then also it is $10. When I'm producing 200 units, then also it's $10. And when I'm producing 2000 units, then also it's $10. So in case of cost per unit, it's remained constant. But in, you know, total, the total cost in case of variable cost is going to increase. So the next thing which we have over here here is fixed cost. Fixed cost is a cost which remains fixed. It does not change with level of activity. It does not change with level of activity. But total, in totality, in total totality, fixed cost remains same. Okay, fixed cost remains same. It does not change with the level of activity. But cost per unit, cost per unit changes. This is opposite of variable cost. This is totally opposite of variable cost. In this, total cost remain constant and cost per unit changes. Why? Let me give you an example of this also. So let's say you have a rent of $20,000 and it's a fixed cost. 
so if you are going to produce one unit then also you have to pay twenty thousand dollar for your factory premises and if you are producing twenty thousand units then also you have to pay a rent of twenty thousand dollars so when you are producing one unit your cost per unit will be twenty thousand divided by one that is twenty thousand dollar that's your cost per unit okay if you are producing thousand units then your cost per unit regarding rent will be twenty dollar per unit okay and how you calculate per unit this see this concept is clear you have you will be taking total cost and you will be dividing it with the units so that's what i have done over here also let's suppose you are producing 10000 units in that case your total you know rent is going to remain constant and over here it will be 2 dollar so you can okay 2 just give me a second 2 dollar so you can clearly see from this particular example that in totality your you know rent expenditure remains fixed that is $20,000 whether you are producing one unit whether you are produce whether you are producing one unit whether you are producing 1000 units or whether you are producing 10000 units but in cost per unit terms when you are producing one unit your cost per unit is $20,000 when you are producing 1000 units it's $20 and when you are producing 1000 units it's $2 so obviously as the as your level of activity increases your cost per unit in case of fixed cost decreases because your denominator increases so if you are going if your denominator is going to increase obviously your cost per unit is going to decrease so if i talk about the graph for uh, cost per unit you know fixed cost so the total cost graph will remain constant it's a straight line graph so over here this is let's say $20000 so you know uh, sorry now nah, so whether i'm producing one unit whether i'm producing 1000 units or whether i'm producing 10000 units the total cost will always be $20000 but if i say in terms of cost per unit when i'm producing one unit when i'm producing one unit it will be $20000 when i'm producing 1000 units it will be $20 and when i'm producing 10000 units it will be $2 so you can clearly see that graph is going to go down as you are going to do what as you are going to increase your production level so that's what you have to do, you know understand very well and this is the concept you know sometime in mcq based question they can clearly you know give you a question like that the variable cost change whether remain constant in per unit or in totality or any two other option or in both the ways or none of the above so you have to select the correct option that in variable cost it changes in what in totality but not in constant then the next you know type of cost is step fixed cost so in case of step fixed cost what happen cost is going to remain fixed for a you know range of activity or level of activity and as it cross that level of activity it's going to again increase so over here what's going to happen over here i have given you example a supervisor of owner could depend on a output if they are producing a output somewhere between 0 to 150 unit then he will be paid a bonus of 200 dollars if they are producing output of 150 to 300 then he will be paid a bonus of 300 dollars and let's say if they are producing output of let's somewhere between 300 to 500 units and then they will be paid a bonus of 500 dollars so if i am going to make graph of it the graph will be level of activity and the cost so from 0 If I'm looking over here, zero to one fifty units, zero to one fifty units. It's how much they with the bonus I will be going to derive. I will be going to derive a bonus of two hundred dollars. Okay, from one fifty to three hundred, I will be going to get a bonus of three hundred dollars. From three hundred to five hundred level, I will be going to going to get a bonus of five hundred dollars. So what's happening over here? from the range, for the range of 0 to 150 the cost remains fixed if you are going to produce one unit two unit three unit four unit five ten twenty thirty forty fifty one fifty till one fifty my cost will be two hundred dollar but as i cross one fifty dollar as i'm going to reach if i'm going to produce one sixty dollars then i you know the organization has to pay how much bonus then they have to pay bonus of three hundred dollars so from one sixty to three hundred so one fifty one to three hundred my cost will remain is again 
again fixed for three hundred dollar. But as I cross three hundred dollar, you know, uh, range, uh, then again my bonus is going to increase a little bit. This thing, this thing you can see over here, this increase thing. So as I have crossed one fifty, my bonus jumped to three hundred, and then from one fifty one to three hundred, it remained constant. Then as I reached three hundred, it again jump, and from uh, you know three hundred to one fifty, it remained constant. So for a range, it remained constant. As you cross that range, it's again going to jump a little bit, and for a next range, it's re going to remain constant. And as you going to cross that range again, it's going to jump. So it's basically fixed. For a range, but not like fixed cost, but which is fixed totally. So that's what we have understood over here. Then there is a concept of semi-variable cost. So semi-variable cost is a cost which has two component, which has two component. One fixed cost component, and the another component is variable cost. Variable cost. So let me give you an example. So what happens in normally in Indian households? Basically, um, I don't know about in like how how it happens in all over the world. But in India, what happens basically regarding the electricity, if I would say, so for electricity bills. So in electricity bill, there are two component. There are one charges for you know one charges for electricity for your this thing or meter charges. The meter which record how much electricity you have consumed in that particular month. So there are one charges regarding the electricity meter, and then there are second charge regarding the amount of units you have consumed, units cons cons units which you have consumed, electricity units which you have consumed. So this particular con electricity unit consumed element, this is variable because it is going to vary on the basis of number of units which you have, you know, electricity units which you have consumed. If you have consumed two hundred units, your bill is going to come accordingly. Someone has consumed, you know, in a uh, this uh, summer month, someone one has consumed four hundred units, so his bill is going to come accordingly. But this component, the electricity meter component, the electricity meter charges, this will remain constant. Okay, let's say this is a, uh, let's consider this charge as ten dollars. So this ten dollar is going to remain constant whether you have consumed two hundred units, four two thousand units, or four thousand units. That ten dollar is going to come same in all the bills, all the electricity bills. It's not going to change. So that is your fixed component, and the variable component is the number of electricity units which you have consumed. It will obviously vary in every bill depending upon the electricity consumption your you know your particular house or your organization or company has. So that is what that is your semi-variable cost. That a cost which has two kinds of component within the the two two kinds of components a variable and the fixed. And you have to bifurcate these component. We in the next part of this particular you know in the next segment we will be understanding that how to bifurcate a semi variable cost into the fixed component and the variable component that's what we are going to study but let's see for see what how you know the we will be having its graph so the cost remain uh, contain both fixed and the variable cost element and are therefore partly affected by the change in the level of activity so over here you have a level of activity and the total cost now if you remember the variable cost curve that starts from here that starts from here but this particular curve does not start from here why because it has a very it has a fixed component so because of that fixed component you know even if you are not consuming let's consider your electricity bill even if for a one per one month you have you know went uh, you you are not at your house and you have traveled uh, all over india or all over world so obviously you will not be having any electricity bill but that 10 dollar that electricity meter charge that's still going to come that's fixed even if you are not consuming any electricity still that electricity meter charge is going to come so that's why it's not going to start from zero because what happens in variable you know uh, variable graph uh, it's basically the on it, it is it's basically the number of units you are going to consume on the basis of that that graph uh, starts over here even if you are not going to consume anything still there will be cost because there is a fixed component and because of that fixed component this particular graph is going to start from 10 dollar and from 10 dollar 
in this particular example okay not always is going to start from 10 dollar it's going to start from the variable uh, fixed cost whatever you have in this particular example i have a 10 dollar fixed cost so it's going to start from 10 dollar and it, then it's going to rise and this rise will depend totally on the variable cost component it's basically dependent upon the number in particular in our example the number of uh, electricity consumption you have it will be dependent upon that if you have electricity consumption of let's say 200 units and for one unit you are paying one dollar so your bill is going to come 200 dollars plus 10 that's 210 so over here it 10 dollar over here and then 200 over here so it's going to come like this okay and if i talk about cost per unit so since it has a variable and fixed component both so your fixed cost your fixed cost is going to decline as the level of activity is going to increase and your variable cost part it's going to remain same so your variable cost you know cost per unit your variable cost per unit is going to remain same but your fixed cost component part is going to decline as your level of activity is going to increase then there is this particular method by which you can bifurcate your uh, semi variable cost into fixed component and variable component so in this method it's very easy method you have to first take total cost cost at the highest level from that you have to subtract total cost at the lowest level and you have to divide it by the total unit at the highest level minus total units at the lowest level and then what you're going to do then you will be you know uh, from this particular thing you will be getting variable cost per unit once you get variable cost per unit you will be multiplying variable cost per unit with the number of units uh, let's say at the highest activity level so you will be multiplying you know total units at the highest activity level and you will be getting your with total variable cost once you get your total variable cost from the total cost from the total cost at the highest activity level you will be subtracting your uh, total variable cost and you will be getting your fixed cost so what i have done over here first i will be take calculating total cost at the highest activity level from that i will be subtracting total cost at the lowest activity level this entire thing will be divided by total units at the highest activity level minus total units at the lowest activity level from this i will be getting variable cost per unit now whatever your total cost at the highest activity level from that i will be subtracting my total variable cost and how i will be calculating my total variable cost i will be multiplying my variable cost per unit which i have calculated over here with the total units at the highest activity level and then i will be getting this is will be my total variable cost from total cost if i will be subtracting total from total cost if i will be subtracting total variable cost i will be getting fixed cost simple and you need to remember this thing total cost is basically your total fixed cost and total variable cost so if you know this and this is this is already given in the question and if from this if you are going to subtract this you can easily get your total variable cost simple and easy now what are the advantage of this method it's a very easy method easy to understand the only disadvantage of this method is basically it's based on the historical data whatever your past data on the basis of that you are using it and also you are considering two activity level the highest activity level and the lowest activity level so that is i would say a little bit disadvantage over here okay now let's do one example over here so you have an output of 200, 300, 400 and your total cost is 7,000, 8,000 and $9,000 and they are cal asking you to calculate the total variable cost, the total fixed cost. What is the total estimated cost if the output is 350 units and what is the total cost if the output is 600 units. So first we will be calculating what is my highest activity level. My highest activity level is 400 units. What is my lowest activity level? That's 200 units and uh, what is my cost at 200 unit level 7000 and what is my total cost at 400 activity level that is 9000 so what i will be doing 9000 total cost at the highest activity level minus total cost at the lowest activity level divided by total units at the highest activity level minus total units at the lowest activity level so basically 9000 minus 7000 divided by 400 minus 200 that's going to give me two thousand dollar divided by 200 so my variable cost per unit is ten dollar per unit now what i'm going to do now i will be calculating total total variable cost total variable cost now uh, you know at 400 activity level 400 active this is number of units 
multiplied by cost per unit so that is my total variable cost is 4000 at what level at 400 level now I will be taking total cost at what level again at the highest level if you are calculating variable cost at the highest level take total cost also at the highest level don't do this that you are calculating total variable cost at the highest activity level and co total cost and total cost you are taking is of you know lowest level then the answer you are going to come that's totally correct both the levels should be same so the total cost at the highest level highest activity level is how much that's 9000 from that I am subtracting the total variable cost at that particular level itself that's 4000 so my fixed cost came out to be total fixed cost came out to be $5000 so over here I have done the same thing this is my total cost this is my total variable cost at the same level and this is my variable uh, fixed cost now they are asking you to calculate total cost at the 350 unit level so now at 350 unit level you know what uh, your fixed cost will remain constant whether you are going to produce 400 units 300 units 200 units 500 units so in totality your fixed cost is going to remain same so at 350 unit level your fixed cost will remain same that is 500 5000 dollars and for variable cost you have already calculated variable cost per unit your variable cost per unit is 10 and how many units you are producing you are producing 350 units so our total variable cost will be number of unit produced multiplied by the variable cost per unit number of unit produced multiplied by the variable cost per unit this is number of unit produced multiplied by total uh, so multiplied by variable cost per unit variable cost per unit so over here 350 multiplied by 10 that's going to give me 3500 and total come out to be 8500 same way i can calculate my total cost at 600 level so my uh, fixed cost is going to remain same even at the 600 unit level that's five thousand dollars and my variable cost will be total number of units produced that is 600 units multiplied by variable cost per unit that is 10 so it's going to come six thousand dollars so my total cost will be eleven thousand dollars so the next question which we have over here is example number two an organization has the following total cost at three activity level at 4000 the cost is 40800 6000 50000 and 7500 54800 variable cost per unit is constant within the activity range and there is a step up of 10% in the total fixed cost when the activity level exceed 5500 now over here what's happening your variable cost is constant uh, in the entire activity level whether when you are producing 4000 units 6000 units and 7500 your variable cost per unit is say constant but your fixed cost per unit is not constant as you uh, after the activity level of 5500 so over here when you have to calculate variable cost per unit and fixed cost per unit you need to understand this concept very very clearly that your variable cost and your fixed cost should be constant should be constant variable cost per unit and total fixed cost should be con same at both the activity level total variable uh, sorry variable cost per unit and total fixed cost should be same at both the activity level then only you can employ the high low formula in this case what's happening your highest point is highest level is 7500 and your lowest level is 4000 but at your at your 7500 level and at your 4000 4000 level your variable cost per unit is constant same but your fixed cost is not same is not same so we cannot take 7500 as our highest level we are going to take 6000 as our highest level or you know as our lowest level either you can take it as lowest level or highest level whatever depending upon the question basically either you can take these two or either you can take these two okay you cannot take 4000 and 7500 you can take you can have to consider like this and even you cannot take these two also uh, you cannot take 4600 you are going to take these two because in uh, you know in case of 6000 and 7500 you are actually your uh, variable cost per unit is also same and your fixed cost is also same so you are going to take uh, these two in case of fourth in you know in case of 4000 level and 6000 level what's happening your uh, in case of 4000 and 6000 your variable cost is same but your fixed cost is not same so at 6000 level and 7500 level your variable cost is also per unit is also same and total fixed cost is also same so we are going to consider the, the, these two levels for the highest and lowest level so considering that 
uh, my total uh, total cost at 7500 level is 54800 and my total cost at 6000 level is 550000 so this is my highest this is my highest level and this is my lowest level so employing the high low formula over here that is total cost at the highest level minus total cost at the lowest level divided by total units at the highest level minus total units at the lowest level i am getting a variable per cost per unit of 3.2 clear till here now what i'm going to do i will be calculating fixed cost above 5500 and fixed cost below 5500 so for calculating a uh, fixed cost above 5500 i have to do simply the same thing over here my total cost at 7500 level is 54800 from that i am subtracting my total variable cost and how will be how i will be calculating total variable cost at 7500 level number of unit produced multiplied by variable cost per unit so number of unit produced is 7500 multiplied by variable cost per uh, variable cost per unit that is uh, 3.2 so over here what's going to happen if i will be you know doing this solving this it's basically 54800 minus 24000 so I will be getting a resultant of 30,800. This 30,800 is my fixed cost above 5,500 level. And they are asking you to calculate, you know, total cost at the 5,000 activity level. So at 5,000 activity level, your total cost is less than 30,800 by how much amount? By 10% amount. So we have to calculate total cost at, you know, uh, below the 5,500 level. So as they have already said in the question that there is a step up of 10% in the total fixed cost when the activity level exceed, you know, 5,500. So if I will make a simple equation that my fixed cost before, you know, before 5,500 activity level is X. So X plus 10% of X is equal to 30,800. That's simply over here. It's basically going to come over here let me do the calculations for you guys so if i will be doing this it's going to come 1.1 x is equals to 30800 and x is going to come 30800 divided by 1.1 that's going to give you a resultant of $28,000 $28,000 over here let me write it over here for you guys going to give me a cost of 28,000 this is my fixed cost uh, before a 5,500 level and now they are asking me to calculate my total cost at 5,000 activity level so that I can easily calculate now I know my variable cost per unit is 3.2 dollar my total fixed cost is how much that is 28,000 dollars so now I can calculate my total variable cost. My total variable cost is number of unit produced that is 5000 into 3.2. So 5000 into 3.2 is going to give you 16,000. 16,000 and 16,000 plus 28,000 that's going to give you 28,000 plus 16,000 that's going to give you $44,000. That's how we are going to solve this question. So only trick in this particular question which we, which we can clearly see is that that you have to to understand that you have to uh, you know the two activity level which you are taking on your the highest level and the lowest level at both these levels your variable cost per unit should be same it's it is obviously it's not it's not given in the question but you should you know it should be clearly mentioned that it should be same and your total fixed cost should also be same The next thing which we have is the term used for the process of ascertaining cost is known as that's known as costing because cost is the value of resources cost is what value of resources which you have put together to produce that goods and services cost accounting cost accounting include costing basically cost calculation and then cost control and then analysis it's in, it has three things cost accounting includes three things measurement of cost cost analysis and cost control and when i say only costing that means i want to calculate the cost that costing is a technique for calculating cost i'm not doing any cost analysis i'm not doing any cost reduction or cost control i'm only calculating measuring cost so when i say measurement of cost that means costing when i say cost measurement plus cost cost analysis plus cost control that's cost accounting and when i say value of resources which has been put together to produce that goods and services that is known as cost 
So this is all we I wanted to cover in this particular session. Let's do a quick revision of this entire session. So we have started from the very, very beginning. That is what is management accounting. So management accounting is something which is related to three things. Measurement of cost, cost analysis and cost control. And why any organization opt for this particular, you know, cost control, cost analysis and measurement. Because we know that if we are, if we will not identify how much cost we have incurred, we will be never able to set our selling price. And if you are not, obviously, and sell, to set a selling price is a very important task in any organization. Also, we can make the future decision in a better way because if we can estimate that what is the amount of cost we are going to incur for this particular project and we can compare that cost from the revenue which estimated revenue, then we can, you know, make a better comparison that whether we should invest in this project or not. Also, we can compare our actual cost with the, you know, the budgeted cost or the estimated cost and if the actual cost is less than the estimated cost, then it's good. But if the actual cost is more than the estimated cost, then that need that really shows that we need to work over there and we have to reduce our cost because as I have already told you cost saving is also a way by which you can increase your profits then we have talked about you know cost unit so cost unit is something or, or I would say a unit in which you express your cost it can be petrol per liter it can be banana per version it can be <coughs> you know potato per kg so basically all this per kg per liter per dozen these are the units in which you are expressing your cost when i say unit cost unit cost is the total you know i would say total expenses which you have incurred to produce one unit of goods and services for producing one unit of goods and services what is the cost you have incurred that is known as cost unit cost center is the cost Cost center is basically a center for which cost is being calculated and analyzed. It can be any department, any action, any function, any activity, any product, any services. Then cost object, cost object is the same concept as you we have studied just now cost center, but it is just confined towards product and services. So when I want to calculate cost of any product uh, or a services, it is considered as cost object. Then we have talked about this thing that why it's important for, you know, ascertaining the cost and evaluating. Then cost classification. Cost classification is done on the basis of nature, function, product, period and by behavior. On the basis of nature, cost is being classified in material, labor and expenses. And in material, it's further classified direct material, direct labor, labor, direct labor, indirect labor and expenses, direct expenses, indirect expenses. And all of your direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses is prime cost. Your indirect material, indirect labor, indirect expenses is your production overheads. Your prime cost plus production overhead is known as production you know, cost. And your non-manufacturing overhead is basically cost related to selling department, administrative department, research and development department, finance department, all of them. Then conversion cost is basically cost which you are going to incur to convert your finished, your basically raw material into finished goods. So direct material plus direct expense plus production overheads. Then on the basis of functions being classified on in, you know, production cost, selling and distribution cost, distribution cost, administration cost and the finance cost. Then on the basis of period and product, period cost, if I say it's a cost which has been incurred and which cannot be changed like your rent, insurance, salaries. Product cost is a cost which you incur to produce one goods and services. Then controllable are the cost which you can, which is, uh, which is basically, which can be controlled by the management. Uncontrollable which cannot be managed, you know, controlled by management. On the basis of behavior cost is further classified into variable, fixed, step fixed and semi variable variable cost is uh, all your direct cost are variable cost and they increases with the increase in the activity level but per unit wise they remains the same and when i talk about fixed cost fixed cost is a cost which remains same at all the activity level in totality but in per unit it increase decrease as the activity if the activity level increases it's going to decrease as the activity level is going to decrease it's going to increase in the per unit level then step fixed cost, this is a cost which remain fixed for a range of activity and then it's going to increase. And that's why we have this like step, the it's graph is also in the form of step like for one activity level it's fixed and as you cross the activity level it's again going to increase. Then, then it remains fixed and then it's going to increase. Then semi-variable cost, it's a cost which has both the component fixed and variable 
and for bifurcating this uh, these component fixed and variable we have a high low uh, method and we have done you know questions related to this high low method over here and we will be doing lots of question when we will be doing video question marathon then we have you know done all of these questions over here regarding different different concept so this is all i wanted to cover in this particular session let's continue our journey from next session till then this is sayadasha maheshwari signing off